Dear friends and subscribers of uh, Cricket Happenings, uh, it's, it, this is your host Ram uh, welcoming you uh, to the early morning edition of the Cricket Happening show and we are going to have a look at two matches. One match, I mean both the matches were uh, basically formalities as India had already booked their ticket into the quarterfinals. They would be meeting Bangladesh. Australia would be waiting to know who they would be meeting. They had a, 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 a predictable and an expected uh, win over Scotland. As far as India were concerned, well, uh, this match, as you know, was a very, very significant match for one person, and that was the Zimbabwean captain, Brendan Taylor. Now, Brendan Taylor uh, definitely was the captain. He was the one who went in to actually uh, toss in the coin with Mahindra Singh Dhoni, and, well, India won the toss uh, but chose to field. Uh, but I thought Brendan Taylor played, you know, played a very, very good knock in his uh, last knock for Zimbabwe. As you know, he wouldn't be playing for Zimbabwe after this in his international career. And as you know, he was joining Nottinghamshire, um, and so he would probably try to qualify for England in the future. Well, I wish him good luck, uh, but what a knock. I mean, what a, uh, what a match uh, for Brendan Taylor. Even though Zimbabwe lost the match, Zimbabwe did very well, I thought, to put on 287. They were, they were 287 all out. Uh, it was, uh, this innings was uh, totally run by Brendan Taylor, the captain of the Zimbabwean cricket team. And as I said, it was his last knock for Zimbabwe in his international career and I thought it was an emotional knock and uh, he really made it count as he really left uh, in glory uh, as far as Zimbabwe is concerned. He's such a great player. I uh, feel so sorry for him uh, that uh, he's leaving Zimbabwe but uh, I thought uh, he has taken his reasons. Whatever, whatever the reasons, uh, well, but uh, let me salute this knock that he played against India yesterday. 138 runs of 110 balls, 15 fours and 5 sixes studded at knock and Zimbabwe reached 287. Well for India, definitely it was not so easy. They, they, were, they were put into real trouble by the Zimbabwean uh, bowlers, especially Panyangra uh, as um, India, India were reeling at 92 for 4, chasing a big total of 287. But uh, Shuresh Raina and Dhoni uh, put up a record um, fifth wicket stand for India in World Cups of 196 runs to see India home uh, in the 49th over and that was a six wicket victory so definitely showed uh, not only the depth in the Indian batting order but also showed that India are absolutely world class as uh, after being 92 for four they recovered to win the match by six wickets and uh, that was it so I'll be talking about that match and as far as the match between Australia and Scotland was concerned. Uh, Scotland uh, didn't have any answer. They found the pace too hot to handle. They were ducking and weaving and they found themselves to be sitting ducks there as uh, they were all up 130 and Australia wiped off the total uh, in just 15.2 overs with Michael Clark coming in as opener cracking 47 of as many balls and then David Warner uh, coming as the number five batsman cracking 21 to uh, Faulkner um, finishing it off with a winning hit for a six. But let's first go into the match, which was a significant match for Brendan Taylor, the captain of Zimbabwe. As I said, it was a very good toss to win. In fact, um, Dhoni decided to uh, field first. And uh, as you know, uh, for India, the bowling, I mean, this is the time for India to do a lot of experimentation. So they decided that uh, they would field first. And Zimbabwe uh, found it pretty hard to their liking. In fact, today we saw Hamilton Masakadza being sent. As you know, he's the main player uh, with uh, like Brendan Taylor, and he was sent to open the innings with uh, Chamu Chibaba. And uh, they found the going very tough with uh, Mohamed Shami, especially Umesh Yadav, generating a lot of pace and also uh, swinging the ball. Uh, Mohamed Shami was also doing it, but uh, Chibaba and Masakadza uh, were really uh, progressing. Um, uh, very very slowly in the sense uh, they, they, they were not able to get runs uh, in a brisk manner and then finally uh, India got three wickets uh, pretty quickly uh, the breakthrough was provided by Umesh Yadav and uh, Hamilton Masakadza um, uh, trying to uh, play at one which was moving away from him was caught by Dhoni of the bowling of Yadav for two that was the first wicket uh, Zimbabwe were 11 for one and then Chamu Chibaba followed to the pavilion and what a catch taken by Shikhar Devan. In fact, uh, Mahindra Singh Dhoni was attacking with two slips and a gully. Uh, he changed that. Uh, he brought a leg slip and he had only Shikhar Devan for company in the slip region. And what a catch taken by Shikhar Devan. The ball was really flying and almost, uh, I would say, Shikhar Devan uh, had uh, sprung up to the second slip 
and picked off this real beauty to dismiss Chamu Chibaba. So Chibaba gone, caught Devon Bowl Shami for 7 of 16 balls with 1 4, which made the score 13 for 2. Uh, Solomon Meyer was uh, promoted in the batting order as one drop, and uh, he did. Uh, he, he tried to uh, resist uh, for some time along with the uh, Zimbabwean captain Brendan Taylor. But Solomon and uh, the runs were pretty hard to come by, they were really, really struggling. Uh, and Solomon Meyer, uh, let me tell you, one has to really commend Solomon Meyer uh, because it was a very, very a slender edge of the bat when Mohit Sharma was bowling and the ball had just uh, probably feathered the bat and uh, before the umpire could raise his finger Solomon Maher like Adam Gilchrist of Australia was walking back to the pavilion so that really showed what a good sportsman Solomon Maher is he didn't wait for the umpire's decision the appeal was not very very vociferous I would say but Solomon Maher decided that he had nicked it and he was walking. I, I saw a real Adam Gilchrist in Solomon Meyer yesterday. So Solomon Meyer kept up the good sportsmanship and this is very much required in international cricket with lots of pressure being put on the cricket umpires. Solomon Meyer was gone for nine and Zimbabwe were in real trouble at that time of 35 for three and it really required someone to stay at the crease. Yes, they definitely had Brendan Taylor at the crease. Sean Williams was an evil companion and then it was absolute throttling by the Indian bowlers. They were not able to wriggle themselves out of it. Uh, Brendan Till and Sean Williams had to really be content with singles and twos and probably an odd boundary. But again, the boundaries were very hard to come by. And uh, well, uh, once the pace bowlers had did their job, it was the turn for the spinners. And, uh, uh, and uh, Mahindra Singh Dhoni, as we have seen in this World Cup, he went with a double spin attack. He brought in Ashwin and Jadeja. Initially, things were okay, but later on, uh, Zimbabwe decided that uh, spinners are the ones they are, go they are going to go for and then slowly the attack started. Sean Williams um, uh, was the man who really really started off uh, going um, like a train against Ravi Chandran Ashwin to give him the most expensive figures in his one day international career as Sean Williams uh, totally clattered Ashwin and what was good to see was all those he had three sixes of the bowling of Ashwin and everything was clattered over the mid-wicket region and, the, and it was a real style, he was pretty aggressive he was using his feet well and he hit three uh, he clouted three sixes of Ashwin and in one over he hit two six and one four and suddenly there was a bit of an explosion in the Zimbabwean innings as Sean Williams was really manhandling Ashwin at the time Brendan Taylor was also adding to it by upping the tempo, tempo by playing some beautiful sweep shots and he was also driving well and he was also started river sweeping the spinners and the spinners were absolutely put under the pump as they suffered at the hands of Brendan Taylor and Sean Williams and suddenly the Zimbabwean innings which was reeling at 33 for 3 in the 11th over when Maher departed uh, suddenly uh, really started uh, appearing uh, uh, appearing um, uh, started having a good appearance as uh, both, uh, both the uh, Brendan Taylor and uh, and uh, Sean Williams had added a uh, very very valuable uh, and, had, and helped Zimbabwe recover to 126 so that gives you that it was a 93 run very good partnership but then Sean Williams and Ashwin was under a lot of pressure uh, it required Mahindra Singh Dhoni to have a talk with Virat Kohli and see what is the fielding arrangement that they could do and then finally Sean Williams um, I would say Ashwin had the last laugh uh, he was clouded for a six uh, but uh, three sixes but in the next over, Ashwin had his man. As Sean Williams drove it back to Ashwin, it was pretty hardly, um, pretty hard hit. But uh, I thought um, Ashwin did well to get the uh, get the fingers under the ball before it hit the ground and plucked up the catch. But not before Sean Williams had raised on to 50 of 57 balls with three fours and three sixes. A very good knock from Williams. And after that, it was Craig Irvine who came in and joined Brendan Taylor. Craig Irvine and Brendan Taylor then started uh, pushing the scoring uh, with uh, some momentum there. Uh, Craig Irvine also hit one very good six. But then, uh, Mo um, and then Brendan Taylor, um, uh, what happened was Brendan Taylor was uh, racing towards his century. And what a way to bring up, uh, bring up his uh, century for Brendan Taylor. As I said, this was his last innings for Zimbabwe in his international career. And he brought that up in great style as he ramped Mohamed Shami over the fence for a sex 
and that to bring up his hundred and that was uh, really done very well by Brendan Taylor I thought and not only that but after that from hundred to hundred and thirty eight was something absolutely racy stuff as he went on to a club Ravindra Jadeja for 24 runs in a one over two sixes were hit straight down the ground and then he followed with uh, uh, I thought three fours so basically 24 runs were taken he also was um, hitting Ashwin very well and Brendan Taylor had gone on to a very good knock and and that was the time where the innings was really gathering some real momentum with the score rating 235 and it looked like uh, Zimbabwe would be uh, breaching the 300 mark but that was not to be as uh, Mohit Sharma picked up his wicket finally as Brendan Taylor departed for 138 of 110 balls 5 15 fours and 5 sixes as I said his last innings for Zimbabwe in international cricket pretty sad but wish him good luck and what a player he has been for Zimbabwe according to me he has been the mainstay of the Zimbabwean team for quite a long time so and then that score read but after that from 235 once Brendan Taylor departed not only did they lose momentum uh, they lost their way totally uh, from 235 for 5 Zimbabwe were all out for 287 Irvine was a victim of Mohit Sharma for 27 of 41 balls, 1 4 and 1 6. Sikandar Raza, who was sent uh, for the first time, normally he's an opener, but he was sent as, uh, I thought he was sent as number 7 today. Uh, and well, he did his job. He did his job of what he was expected after having been sent at number 7 uh, as he went after the Indian bowling and uh, he clattered 28 of 15 balls with 1 4 and 3 6. Other than that, it was a total cleanup by the Indian pace bowlers as uh, Chakabwa was uh, out for 10 of 13 balls and Panyangra was out for 6. Mupari was not on 1 and Chitara was bowled by Yadav for Duck, thus bringing an end to this uh, Zimbabwean innings, <coughs> which I thought on a very good batting pitch made 287. It was a good score. And for India, the bowling figures were looking pretty sharp there. Shami 9 was 2 made and 3 for 48 were the, the, the spoils were shared by all the three. Uh, pace bowlers, Mohamed Shami 3 for 48, Umesh Yadav 3 for 43, Mohit Sharma 3 for 48, Ashwin as I said Ashwin um, had the most expensive figures in his one day international career as he was clattered for 75 runs, Sean Williams was the man who really gave him the real belter I would say, 10 overs 1 for 75, Jadeja 10 overs also was very very costly, none for 71, so as I said the Zimbabwean uh, batsman really made merry when the spinners were on yesterday. Uh, well, as far as the Indian innings was concerned, it was not a good start at all. Chasing a big total of 287, Rohit Sharma and Dhawan started. Uh, they took on the score to 21. They added 21 for the first wicket. And that was the time things started happening for Zimbabwe. As uh, Tinasha Panyangra was bowling well, uh, first picked up the wicket of Rohit Sharma with an away going delivery. Second, the Raza plucking up the catch. He was gone for 16 of 21 balls with two fours. And then Shikhar Dhawan played on to a ball from Panyangra to see his stump shattered. He was gone for 4 of 20 balls with 1-4. He made it 21 for 2. And then Virat Kohli and Ajinkya Rahane were involved in a misunderstanding which resulted in Rahane being run out for 19 of 24 balls with 3 fours. And then Virat Kohli himself uh, got a ball which was outside the leg stump from Sikandar Raza. And Virat Kohli probably um, playing a stroke actually dragged the ball onto his stump. So Sikandar Raza was a part-time bowler and uh, Virat Kohli had uh, made an attractive 38 or 48 balls with 4 fours and India were in real trouble at the time at 92 for 4 in the 23rd over and as I said India were chasing a very big total of 288 to win the match and um, well at that time we had two new batsmen at the crease Suresh Ryan and MS Dhoni uh, Dhoni was not in so great form I would say but Dhoni slowly settled down as usual nerdling the singles uh, getting and, and he had a very good partner in Suresh Raina who is a very good runner between the wickets so they definitely what they did is they dispersed the Zimbabwean field by taking quick singles and uh, Suresh Raina probably advised by Dhoni not to attempt anything rash uh, had to really uh, be a bit sedate uh, even though he hit uh, nine fours and four sixes and Suresh Raina what he did he went on to a century and that was pretty good to see as from from 92 for four the Zimbabwean bowlers couldn't get any handle on this Indian innings as this Indian innings uh, really really wiped off any hopes that Zimbabwe had with a very very long partnership in fact they added 196 runs which was a record for India for the fifth wicket in one day internationals as Suresh Raina finished with an 
unbeaten 110 of 104 balls with 9 fours and 4 sixes. Courtesy, he was definitely dropped, I thought, uh, very early on, uh, but he benefited immensely from it. And Dhoni, well, he also did his bit uh, as usual, uh, finishing on an unbeaten 85 of 76 balls with 8 fours and 2 beautiful sixes being hit. And India were home in the 49th over. Def there was definitely some pressure on India, I would say, but um, I thought Suresh Raina and Dhoni uh, quelled that uh, particular fear uh, by taking them home. So India definitely uh, showing uh, what they are made up of. And now they would have a quarterfinal meeting with Bangladesh in Melbourne at the Melbourne Cricket Ground on 17th of March. And what a, uh, what a night that is going to be. Well, Panyangra... Uh, 8.4 over, Suresh Raina was named man of the match. I would have probably thought since Brendan Taylor was uh, um, was uh, retiring as far as Zimbabwean cricket is concerned, uh, I would have thought that Brendan Taylor should have been given the man of the match. Well, or probably a joint man of the match to Brendan Taylor. Uh, I thought um, Brendan Taylor definitely deserved it because I said it was the last knock. So, uh, anyways, uh, Suresh Raina was given man of the match. He truly deserved it, no doubt about it. He also played well. Uh, Panyangra 8.4 was 1 made in 2 for 53, rocked India a bit. Uh, Chatara none for 59, Mupariwa was costly, none for 61 of 10. Solomon Maher bowled 5 was none for 29. I always would admire Solomon Maher as he would, uh, he has just started his career and he has already, uh, I would say, made a very good impression by showing what a good sportsman he is as far as international cricket is concerned. Sean Williams 5 was no made in none for 31. Sikandar Raza it was 1 for 37 and Maskarza 2 overs no made in 1 for 15. So that wraps up my uh, India versus uh, Zimbabwe game. Now let's have a brief peek uh, at the Australia versus Scotland game. Uh, it was a toss which was won by uh, by Michael Clark and uh, Michael Clark uh, decided that he would insert Scot the Scottish end to bat and uh, Scotland, well as I said, they were, pri they, they were finding it very difficult to handle uh, the pace of the likes of Mitchell Stark, Cummins, Watson and Johnson and that really showed when they were all out for 130. Uh, Kyle Kodzer was out for not. Uh, McLeod, as I said, had a very bad World Cup. Uh, one probably would have had a lot of expectations on Callum McLeod because he has been, he has been, he has been scoring heavily uh, as far as Scotland are concerned in all the Intercontinental Cup matches. But Callum McLeod was out and as thought he had a very bad World Cup. He was out for 22 of 19 balls with 5 fours. Uh, and what was uh, the other thing that one noticed about Scotland here? And this, they were all out for 130. Uh, it was probably uh, they had probably made up their minds that uh, the only way to deal with the Australians is to go full tilt at them and uh, start attacking the ballers. And probably that was the reason. Even though if you look at the knock, there, Callum McLeod made 22 of just 19 deliveries, five fours in that knock. Matthew Machan 40 of just 35 balls, six fours. Uh, and then Preston Momsen was out for not. Coleman was out for not. Brinkton for one, Cross for nine, and then George Davy uh, hit three uh, consecutive fours of the bowling of Watson to score 26 of 35 balls with four fours. Uh, then we had uh, Taylor out for not, and then Leesk uh, unveiling an unbeaten 23 of 11 balls with four fours. And uh, uh, probably Scotland thought that the only way to deal with the Australians is to really wield the long handle, but uh, it was, um, I would say, uh, it was um, easily. Uh, easily said than being done and finally it was there for all to see as Australia rolled out the Scottish Scotland batsman for 130 runs uh, in only 25.4 overs. That really gives you how Scotland have played. They have really started attacking the Australian bowlers but uh, that has really uh, does not really help uh, matters I would say and Scotland, uh, Scotland were 130 all out. Bowling, <coughs> Mitchell Stark was very sharp uh, in fact, he's the highest wicket taken on in this World Cup. 4.4 overs, 1 million, 14 runs and 4 wickets. Cummins, 7 overs, 1 million, 3 for 42. Watson, 3 overs, 1 for 18. Mitchell Johnson, 4 overs, 1 million, 1 for 16. Uh, Glenn Maxwell, 4 overs, 24 runs and 1 wicket. And Faulkner, 3 overs, 1 million, 1 for 15. Australia decided to rejig the batting order just as, the, as they have already made their uh, place clear. They wanted Michael Clark was the one who actually opened the innings uh, for his team. And he cracked an unbeaten, uh, sorry, he cracked a quick fire 47 of 47 balls <coughs> with seven fours and two sixes, missing his, uh, missing his 50. Wardlaw was the one who took his wicket. And then they also lost Aaron Finch for 20 of 10 balls with three fours and one six. Shane Watson contributed 24 of 23 balls with four fours. And then it was left to James Faulkner, who actually finished it off with, an, uh, with, a, with a big six, not out on 16 of six balls with two fours and one six. 
and David Warner who came in at number five um, um, had a quick fire unbeaten 21 of six balls two fours and two sixes as I said the match was a mere formality Australia completing the formalities there with a seven wicket victory and uh, the man of the match went to Mitchell Stark for his splendid bowling spell Ian Wardlaw five overs was very very costly he was uh, hit for 57 runs with only one wicket to show to his name uh, Taylor five overs one for 29 Josh Davey one for 38 and Leesk uh, bowled only two balls so that's over so now as I said India will be facing uh, Bangladesh in the quarterfinals uh, Australia will be probably waiting uh, for the events to happen today to know who they would be meeting because we know West Indies uh, are taking on the United Arab Emirates Pakistan are taking on Ireland today and Ireland probably would be fancying their chances because for West Indies they not only have to beat UAE they also have to beat the weather if at all they have to avoid being pushed out and uh, I think Ireland are well placed even if they lose against Pakistan and if um, uh, if there is going to be a weather problem between West Indies and UAE uh, Ireland would uh, have their probably have their first um, knock at a World Cup quarterfinals and what a day that would be uh, well as I said two matches coming up today West Indies with the United Arab Emirates the weather is a bit dry see here unfortunately and also there is a match which is coming up between Pakistan and Ireland today a good game between Pakistan and Ireland I would think um, and well dear fans subscribers uh, that uh, really brings uh, an end uh, to this cricket happening show of mine Thanks for your company as usual and thanks for your tremendous support to the cricket show. Your host Ram will be seeing you tomorrow with uh, the match summaries on both these matches which are happening today. Until then, it's goodbye for the day. Thank you.